Hello, I'm Mrs H. You can find my patterns at www.mrs-h.com or on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash bagoneer. Today's video, we are gonna be sewing the Morgan Messenger bag. Now this is a fantastic bag for everybody in your life. You can style this for anybody, regardless of gender or fabric choices. It comes in two sizes, the small and the large. The small is perfect for carrying a tablet. Um, in fact, you could get quite a large tablet in there and the large is perfect for carrying a large laptop. Inside, well actually, let's start with the outside. So we've got a vertical zip pocket and this has got a large pocket in there. So the small, this pocket is huge. You could probably fit an e-reader in there. And in the large, the pocket is big enough to take a tablet if you're going to put a tablet in there i would recommend adding a bit of padding but it's got a large pocket there as you saw probably there are feet on the bottom and it's a nice sturdy base you can always add some vinyl or faux there to make sure that that's waterproof as well now under the flap which is closed with two magnetic snaps there is a hidden back pocket as is usual in my patterns. That's a large back pocket and that has also got an element of padding in there. There's a top zip closure. So not only are your items secure with a flap, but also you've got the top zip there. So if you do drop your bag or it falls over or it gets knocked, things are not gonna roll around and fall out. Inside then, we've got a zip pocket. And this zip pocket has got a contrast backing to it. And you can do that as well. It tells you how to do that in the pattern. And then in the front there are a couple of cargo pockets. And I've used my contrast fabric for those just to add a little bit extra feature to that. So this cargo pocket is in the pattern. And then on the other panel, you've got a padded device pocket. And this closes and secures with a hook and loop tape closure. Now this is padded both on the pocket side and on the main panel side there. So this um, this bag is sized for a tablet and that device pocket is perfect for a tablet and the large one is perfect for um, a laptop. They're both exactly the same just the dimensions are different. These small ones have been made using upcycled shirts. So for my straps, I've chosen to piece those to make the most of my limited fabric. So I've pieced both of those. The tutorial for that is on our Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash bagoneer. If you're ready to get started, let's sew. So we're first gonna start on our zip pocket. So we're gonna start with lining first. You'll need your interior zip pocket pieces. That's the M1, M2 and M3, and you'll need a seven inch zip. If you're using continuous zip like me, then you'll need to cut that slightly longer. If you're making the large, um, large bag, then you'll need a nine inch zip or an 11 inch zip if you're using continuous zip. Okay. Um, right, so first of all, we need our zip facing and on the back of this on the interface side we're going to draw a line well we're going to draw a box actually and we're going to put the box right in the middle and we're going to draw a line three quarters of an inch or two centimeters from each long edge and one inch or two and a half centimeters from each short edge and that is going to give us a nice um a nice size box so you just need to draw your lines at the measurements as described in the pattern, and that will be in the center. As long as you've cut straight, that is. Okay. And then down the center of that box, I'm gonna draw a line. Now that should be a half inch box, 1.2 mil box, um, width wise. And it should be for the small size, it should be seven inches long or 18 centimeters. And for the large, it should be nine inches or 23 centimeters long. Okay, and then, 
So I've drawn a line down the centre and then a triangle at each end. And I'll swap you over so that you can see that a little bit easier. Okay, now we're going to place this onto one of our lining main panels. And this is the lining main panel without fleece attached. Right, so you've got two lining main panels. One should have fleece attached and one shouldn't. So this is the one without. Find your centre of the panels so that you can line everything up nice. I'm just going to mark my centres in the top and bottom of the seam allowance. And the same with this one. Use pencil with this one so it can be seen. And then we're going to place them right sides together. So that's right sides facing. A zip panel, uh, zip pocket facing, sorry, on top of the lining main panel. Um, and we are going to place this. So I'm doing the small, so I'm going to place mine one inch from the top. That's two and a half centimetres. If you're making the large, you're going to place it two inches or five centimetres from the top. Okay, all of these measurements are in your pattern, so you can double check as well. But I've got the pattern in front of me, so make sure that I don't tell you anything wrong. And then once you're happy with the position, add a couple of pins just to hold that in place while you're sewing around it. We're going to sew around the outside of this box. Okay, so we're going to ignore that line in the centre and the triangles that we've just marked. We're going to sew all the way around the outside of the box. Now what I like to do to get a nice neat finish on this is I like to start somewhere around this top edge here, part way along the line, sew to the corner. When we stop in the corner there, we're gonna leave our needle down, lift our presser foot and pivot, sew along that short line, do the same again and all the way around the box. And when you get to the corner, what I like to do is I like to decrease my stitch length right down to a teensy tiny little stitch so that I can get right into that corner, around the short edge and around that corner, and then go back to my usual stitch length. I just find that you could be a bit more accurate about getting into those corners if you do that. If you're not comfortable doing that, then don't worry about it. Um, but that's how I um, like to make, it, make sure I get nice neat sew. So. so I'm gonna start with my needle down, and I'm starting with my regular stitch length until I get to the corner there. Now I've overlapped my stitches there, so I didn't need to back stitch at the start and the end. I was okay just overlapping. Now we are going to cut through that centre line. So get yourself some really sharp scissors or a knife or something. And if you want to make sure that you don't go past the end when you're snipping, you can always add a little pin just in the end along that line of stitching just to make sure that you don't cut further than, um, than you should. Because that's the, that's the key here, we don't want to snip through our stitches, but we want to go as close as we can to the corners, but without actually clipping our stitching. Okay, so I've just used my knife to cut a little hole in the centre there, just to get me started. And then I'm going to use my scissors, and I know these are quite big, but these are currently my sharpest scissors. So, um, just lifting it up so that I can get a really, really good view of where I'm cutting there. Just getting right into the corner and then along the other end. 
and you'll know as soon as you turn this out you'll know if you've gone far enough because it will start bunching in the corners if you haven't try these littler ones see if i can get in a bit better i think i might need to invest in some new scissors or stop using my fabric scissors for cutting paper okay right i can go a little bit closer on that one so i'm just going to snip a little bit further in right lovely now i think the key to a really really neat um zip pocket is if you press these stitches first before you do anything so once you've cut it give it a little press and then push your iron against this zip pocket facing so push it up and then push it down and side to side and then you're making sure that that um that seam is really nice and neat and then we'll push it through and press from this right side and then any wrinkles that you might get are going to be hidden on the inside so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to first of all i'm going to press press it flat just to steam those stitches oh my cable's caught on my foot there we go not my actual foot my table foot i'm just going to press that and then i'm pushing up against the facing and I'm pushing, oh, I'm not, hang on a sec. I'm gonna push down away from the facing and each side as well. And I'll show you this before I go any further. So that's what it looks like at the moment, okay? It's all kind of pushed in towards center. Now I'm gonna push, I, I like to do one long edge and then one, the other long edge and then the ends. So I'm gonna push that through just in the middle of one long edge. Use my fingers to make sure that that's rolled, that seam is rolled out nice and neat and press that bit. And then do the equivalent on the other side and then go around the edges. And I think that way then you can just control a little bit better how the, how the fabric's falling, how it's sitting. So I've done one bit in the middle there and I'm going to do the second bit as well. You can just wet your fingers as well. If you find that you're not gripping hold of the fabric particularly well, just have a little bit of water and dip your fingers in just to dampen them slightly. Give you a little bit of extra grip on the fabric so you can roll it back. Okay, so both middles are done. Now I can pull the end and pull that into place from behind. Make sure it's nice and flat from the front before you start pressing, because it's the front that people are gonna see. Nobody's gonna see what's behind this. It doesn't really matter if there's any wrinkles in the back. And if anybody's inspecting inside your zip pocket for wrinkles, then I think we've got issues there. Um, but just make sure it's nice and flat and neat from the front. So again, just doing the last corner, and I've just pulled it back out of way, out of the way. Make sure it's nice and neat on the front, and a little press. Now, once you're happy with it on the front, and you can think there's no wrinkles there. Now there might be some wrinkles on the back. That's fine. Don't panic. But you can then press from the back side just to make sure that that's all in place, nice and neat. And that's our facing added. Okay. We can pop that to one side for the minute. Going to move on to the rest of the zip pocket and you'll need your zip pocket bottom and your zip pocket top. Now the zip pocket top is the piece that's slightly longer. They should both be the same width, but the zip pocket top is taller. Okay, so in this one, I've done um, my zip pocket top in my contrast fabric. Okay, now the one we're gonna use first is a zip pocket bottom. That's a slightly smaller one. If you've got directional fabric, follow the instructions in the pattern. It will tell you exactly where to put your zip, which edge to put it on. So if it says put it on the upper edge or the top edge, then do that if you've got directional fabric. If you haven't, then it doesn't really matter. Um, but I like to follow the instructions just so that when I do have directional fabric, I'm already in the habit of, of um, following that. Right, so we are gonna put some basing tape on the upper edge of the right side of our zip pocket bottom. Okay, and this, if this is the first time you've done a pocket like this, don't panic, it is right. It does feel a little bit 
alien, a little bit different. Don't panic too much. And then peel that back in off. And we're gonna add the zip also right sides up and line up the centers of your zip if you've marked it or if your zip is not quite long enough and we're going to put the zip pull to the right okay and then we're going to sew that into place using a scant quarter inch seam um, that's a approximately a five mil for a scant quarter inch seam i'm using my regular stitch length and I'm just sewing along this edge of the zip through these both layers. Back stitch at the start and the end. Right now, all we're gonna do is just turn that so that the zip, the right side of the zip is on the wrong side of the fabric and give it a little press, okay? Just make sure, all you're doing is making sure that this is turned back nice and neat so that the fabric is well away from the teeth of the zip. When we come to sew it into place, we just want to be sure that that, um, firstly, that the basting tape is hidden, but secondly, that the fabric is well away from the zip teeth going to give that a little bit more of a press great now we want our zip pocket top that's our longer piece and if you've got a top edge or directional fabric add your tape to the upper edge and then turn it 180 degrees so I'm going to do that as though I'm using directional fabric um, although mine has just got a, um, a nice tartan check on it not directional as such although we did try to cut it straight because it would be very, very obvious if we cut it wonky, I think. <laughs> okay, so I've added it to my upper edge and now I'm gonna turn it 180 degrees and I'm adding my zip onto the bottom there. So my zip is right sides up, but my fabrics are right sides together. Okay. So I've got my zip right side up, my fabrics right sides together. And I'm going to sew along this edge the same as we did before with a scant quarter inch seam or five mil seam just to attach it into place. Now we're just gonna press these away from each other, away from the zip, same as we did before. So the right side of your zip should be on the wrong side of your fabrics and the right side of your fabric should be on the wrong side of your zip. That is correct. Okay, so don't panic too much. Don't think that you've done it wrong. You've done it correct. So just press these fabrics away from the zip just to make sure that they're not gonna get caught when you're sewing. That's nice and flat, lovely. Now we're gonna pull our main panel back towards us and have it um, right side down so you're looking at the facing and we're gonna add a line of tape along the top and bottom to this one as well. Okay, don't panic too much if your box is slightly um, skew if you can manipulate that, you can pull that back into place as you're adding your zip here. Okay, so I've just added that to the top and bottom. And then we're gonna attach this zip pocket into here. Now you've got two choices. What you can either do is um, place it in like this from the back and just make sure that these edges line up and then flip it over and check that it um, sits nicely through the box. Or you can do it the opposite way. So you can have your zip pocket um, interfacing side up make sure that your zip pull is in the middle and that your zip pocket top is at the top okay so you need the longer panel at the top and your shorter panel at the bottom and then just going to place this over and you can line up the edges of the pocket with the edges of the um, facing that's how it should be 
and then just pull this into place so it sits nice and parallel to the zip teeth. I'm going to close my zip slightly more so that I can make sure that those zip teeth are nice and straight and just manipulate this into place, just pull it into place so that it's nice and straight, nice and neat. And once you're happy with that, press down to attach that tape onto the zip teeth there. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew around the outside of this box. And I like to start down here in this bottom section and go all the way around because I think it's not quite so noticeable. Um, now I have got pale grey thread in my machine today which I suspect might have been a bit of an error but um, if you see any wonky stitching we won't mention it, okay, we'll just keep it between ourselves. So I'm going to use my regular stitch length until I get to the corner, same as before. I'm going to start my, foot, my needle down. And then when we get to the corner, stop with our needle down, lift the presser foot, pivot, and keep sewing around. Now, the same as I did before, I didn't actually backstitch there. I just overlapped my stitching slightly. All right, I'm just gonna trim that thread off. There. Now, on the back, nice, I haven't caught anything, great. <laughs> I'm just gonna bring my zip pocket top down to meet the bottom of the zip pocket bottom, and then I'm gonna pin these into place. Let's open our zips halfway before we forget. And I'm only pinning through the zip pocket layers. Okay, don't touch this lining. Only want to be sewing through these zip pocket layers in this next step. And we're going to leave a turning gap in the bottom there of the zip pocket. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start at one top edge, back stitch sew down to around about here-ish, back stitch, and then increase our stitch length to the longest stitch length that we can do on our machines. Sew to about there, so we leave a nice big turning gap, and decrease our stitch length back down to its regular stitch length. Then I'm gonna back stitch, and sew to the corner, and back up to the top, and back stitch again. So from these top corners to here, be our regular stitch length we're back stitching at the start and the end and then across this turning gap it will just be basting stitches and this is the way we're going to get a really neat finish when we turn our bag through and we try and close our turning gap okay we're going to sew these basting stitches then we're going to steam press them and then we'll remove them later on so i'm just gonna sew from this side i'm going to sew from the top here and i'm using my regular seam allowance of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter and my regular stitch length.
Right, so that's our zip pocket done there. Check that's all ha good, yeah. All good. Now, if you've creased your fabric quite badly sewing that, you might want to give that a little press, but you might not have and you might be fine with it, in which case we can just crack on. Now, we're going to pop this to one side for the minute, but we are going to use it again, so don't put it too far away. And what we need now is piece K, our cargo zip pocket. Uh, sorry, cargo pocket, not cargo zip pocket. I don't think that exists. Well, it might exist. It doesn't exist in any of, one, any of my patterns yet. <laughs> Now, you've got two pieces. I've chosen to use contrast for one of mine and not contrast. So I'm gonna consider my contrast, my exterior, and my, um, not contrast, my lining, because that matches the rest of the lining colors. Now, I'm gonna place these right sides together, and we're, all we're gonna do is sew along this top edge using our regular stitch length. Nothing too tricky at this point. So I just add a couple of pins, to hold it together while I'm sewing it and using our regular stitch length, regular seam allowance, just along this top long edge. Back stitch at the start and the end. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're going to turn it right sides out and give it a nice press. Check my iron hasn't gone to sleep yet. Now to get a really neat finish, what you can do is unfold it like this and just press against that seam and then fold it right sides together and press again. And then you make sure that that seam is just sitting really nice and neat there. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So I've got it open and I'm just pressing it against the seam and then I'm folding right sides together. And because I'm using two different fabrics here, I'm just making sure that what I'm using as my lining is tucked in under my contrast fabric so that you can't really see it too much. And just press along that top edge. Now we're gonna give a um, the top edge that we've just sewn a nice top stitch and baste around the outside edge. So I'm just gonna add a couple of pins to hold it in place so it doesn't shift around while we're sewing it. So when I say baste, I mean use a long stitch length. So we're gonna to top stitch using our regular top stitching length along the top. You might want to increase your stitch length, um, but if you find that you, um, forget to change it back then um, maybe consider not changing it i'm just going to change my needle because um, i want to be sure that my top stitching is nice and neat i'm just putting a sm slightly smaller needle in because i'm only using the two fabrics i'm using quite lightweight fabrics today so i just want to make sure that i'm matching my needle to the fabrics in order to get a nice neat finish on my top stitch. Okay. Oh, nothing worse than trying to thread a needle on camera. <laughs> there we go. Right. So for this one, I'm gonna start with the top stitching and I'm gonna start at this top corner here, go along the length with my top stitching and then I'll do the basting afterwards. Um, now we're doing the top stitching at one eighth of an inch away from the, um, from the edge, from the sewn edge, that's three mil. And then the basting you can do up to a quarter of an inch or six mil, but I might just stick to the three mil and then I know it's definitely not gonna be seen because I'm using a uh, contrast thread pale gray.
go. Okay, now that's just, literally just to keep the layers together nice and neat as we're um, folding the um, cargo pocket together. Okay. So if you want to, um, maybe your fabric is lightweight like mine, just give it a little press so make sure it's nice and flat, nice and neat before we start doing any of these folds for the cargo pocket. Right, now I'm just gonna double check the measurements um, to make sure that I'm giving you the right information. First of all, we do need to mark our center. So go ahead and do that. And I, um, I'm gonna use my white chalk marker so that you can see a little bit easier where that is. Okay. Now, handily, my checks on my fabric do run completely straight up and down so I can follow the edge of that, which is nice. Now we're gonna draw a line either side, or two lines either side. One is gonna be three quarters of an inch away, that's two centimeters, and one is gonna be one and a half inches away, that's 3.8 centimeters. And we're gonna do those either side of that center line. And one and a half inches. Okay, and then I'm gonna twizzle it round and do the same on the other side. I'm gonna do my three quarters of an inch and an inch and a half. And I'm just making sure that the line on my ruler lines up with the top of the pocket so I make sure it's completely parallel. Then what we're gonna do, we are gonna fold these outside edges in to that center line. So they should fold along that second line. Okay, what we're gonna do, we are gonna fold it back on itself like that, along those outside lines, and then give it a little press. I'll do that. Oh, try not to move it after you've done it, <laughs> before you've pressed it. Just make sure that the top edge of the pockets line up before you give it a little press. Just then you know that it's gonna be completely parallel. Okay. Now I can bring that folded line or that crease line to the center and that should in theory be folding along that second line that we marked there and then we're going to give that a little press as well just to press it into place just make sure that your top edge is nice and neat there okay so once we're happy with that and i can see that my top edge is nice and straight i'm gonna add a couple of pins um, I'm going to make sure they're these glass head pins. I've got a few odd ones in here. I'm just trying to use pins that you're able to see quite well. So I'll add a couple of pins in just to hold this in place while we do our second half. We don't want that moving anywhere because we're quite happy with that. We're going to match the other half to this half. Okay, so I'll add a pin in the top and bottom. And then we're gonna do exactly the same. So we can fold it back along the outside edge and give it a little press, make sure it's all nicely lined up on that top, top stitched edge. A Little bit of a steam. I think steam works really well here in this situation. And this is the difference between a nice neat pocket. Okay, and now on that folded edge, we're gonna bring into the center and now I've got checks, so I'm just making sure that these line up nice and neat across the join there, as well as this top edge being nice and neat here. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna give that a little press. And then I'm gonna remove my pins and make sure that it's perfectly lined up. Remove my pins carefully, make sure not to burn myself 
perfectly lined up with those tartans and with those checks and give it a little bit more of a press. Now it might not match at the bottom. If you're trying to pattern match, it might not match 100% at the bottom, depending on how straight your cutting was. If you favor matching these checks in the middle, then it will, um, it will look much, much better. And it won't really notice if there's anything at the bottom that's not 100% matching. So if you are also trying to match, make sure that these line up really nicely. Now I am gonna add a little clip in the top here, well, a big clip actually in the top here, just to hold these two edges in place here because I know that those checks match up nice and neat. Then at the bottom here, we're just gonna add a little, no, we're not. We're not gonna do that, I'm lying to you. We're gonna go and have a cup of tea and leave that to set. I'm not, because I'm on video, but you can, okay? So clip it top and bottom and just leave it for a minute to cool down. And as it cools down after pressing, it's gonna set into place really nice. Me though, because I'm on video, I'm gonna pull my main panel back out. And this is the same one that's got the zip pocket on, okay? and I'm pinning that zip pocket up out of the way. And if you can't still see your center marks, redo those. And then you're gonna place this cargo pocket. So open it out a little bit and it should have some nice crisp lines there. We're gonna sew from top to bottom or bottom to top, your choice, along those folds to make sure that they are set in place. And then we're gonna place this on our main panel. So I am going to just start at the top there and just do a really tight top stitch. So close to the edge without going over, using your regular sort of top stitching stitch length. And I backstitched at the top because I don't want that to come undone, but I haven't backstitched at the bottom because that's going to be caught in our seam. Now this one, so that I'm sewing on the right side, I'm going to start at the bottom of this one and then finish at the top. Okay. So we've got our pleats nice and crisp. So they're nice and crisp already because you steamed them and then you let them sit while you just add a, add a moment to find your bits and pieces or have a cup of tea or something. And now you're coming back and top stitching them. And then this center line, you can just double check that your creases are along those um, middle lines which you marked, which mine are, which is nice. That center line, we're just gonna line up with our center mark on our lining main panel. Now I've lain it, lain it, laid it, placed it, placed it perfectly on the bottom one. And then the top one, I'm just making sure that that goes in a nice smooth line up to that center mark on the top there. And I'm gonna add a pin very carefully so as not to disturb any creases or lines or pleats or anything. Add one in the centre there and a little bit further up and also at the top just to make sure that that is running completely straight from top to bottom. Now we're going to stitch this into place from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. In fact, my favourite thing to do is start at the bottom and back stitch go up to the top, do a little back stitch, and then pivot and turn around and sew back down again, because then you know that that is definitely, definitely secure. My husband likes to be pretty rough with the bags that I make. Um, so I know that if I double stitch this and top um, back stitch at the top, I'm definitely, definitely secure. And there is no way that is going anywhere. So make sure you're using your regular stitch length. Now I'm gonna start at the bottom, um, and you might want to as well and then I'm gonna sew up to the top.
So here you can see that I've sewn on top of my stitches all the way up. It's nice and neat and I've got extra security at the top there to make sure that that is not coming undone. Pull these pins out and then just fold this so that these edges meet again in the center. And if you want to, you can pin or you can clip that. And then we're gonna pull these other edges into place to make sure that they match around the edge and if they don't don't panic okay <laughs> make them match as best you can but if you can't make them match don't worry too much okay i don't think really anything in your seam allowance is going to be noticed so where this is being sewn in it's not really going to matter and we can trim it down if you find that you've got too much fabric hanging over just trim it down, okay? There's no problem with that at all. All right, so mine is matching pretty well. I'm just gonna have a look at the other side. So my cargo pocket is hanging over the edge here slightly. So I'm just gonna trim this down along this edge so that when I baste it on, I know that I'm not um, going off the edge there. Okay, this will all be hidden in our seams anyway, just to make life a little bit easier. And on the front here, my edges are not quite lined up, so I'm just going to trim a little bit of that as well. Okay, now these very, very small adjustments, I'm cutting maybe a couple of millimetres off. It's not going to affect how your gusset sits or how it gets sewn in, okay? So don't panic too much. And then we're just gonna baste this into place around the outside. I like to top, uh, to back stitch at the top and the uh, top on the other side. Um, just so that we know that our pocket is nice and secure and you're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance or six mil seam allowance and you can use whichever stitch length you want. You can use a long basting stitch or you can use your regular stitch or your top stitching stitch. Whichever one you think, you're not gonna forget to then change it back again afterwards. Right, that's our cargo pocket added. So you can take the pins out, take your zip pocket down. You don't need to have that pinned up out of the way anymore. And that's one panel done. Now I'm gonna, before I forget, and if you are the same as me, try not to forget, I've got some labels that say that I made this bag. So I'm gonna add that now before I go any further because I usually forget to add them in so I'm going to do it now, and then if I um, if I forget later, it doesn't matter because I've already done it. So I'm just adding mine into my side seam here, and I'm going to base that into place. Right, I'm sorted, ready for later. Feeling quite pleased with myself there. <laughs> I usually forget that. Now we can pop this to one side. Let me just snip my extra thread there. Always get a few extra threads, don't we? No matter how careful we are. Okay. I'm gonna put that to one side. That panel is done. We're gonna work on our second lining main panel now. And you're gonna need two back and device pockets. One of them should have fleece attached and one of them shouldn't and you need your second lining main panel, the one with the fleece attached, and you've added your fleece where it matches the bottom but not the top. Okay, so again for mine, I've chosen to use a contrast 
for my um, device pocket and then my fleece is added to my lining fabric so my lining is this green and then my exterior is going to be a mixture of the grey and this tartan so I'm adding this in just a bit of an extra um, bit of an extra feature so pop these right sides together matching all of the raw edges and we are just going to sew along this top edge using our regular seam allowance regular stitch length just to hold those two together oh and back stitch at the start and the end Right now the same we did for the cargo pocket we're just going to open this up and give it a little press and then fold it right sides out give it a press and top stitch like so okay so just going to do exactly the same this one's the nice easy pocket we've done the tricky bits now we can relax a little bit now and just enjoy this bit so I'm just pressing away from the seam. And if you want to, if you think your machine can't really handle the belt, you can trim this extra bit of fleece away from this seam allowance here if you want to. Um, and that just helps machines that are not quite such a beast as mine um, to be able to sew through these layers. And then I folded it um, so that the right sides are poking out and giving it a nice press that seam is nicely turned out there okay now the side that has the fleece on is going to be inside your pocket and the side that hasn't got the fleece on is going to be outside so when you come to top stitch top stitch on the piece that doesn't have the fleece attached so I'm going to top stitch along the top and then I'm going to change my basting stitch length and stitch around the outside just to hold all those layers together exactly the same as we did for our um, cargo pocket and I'm sewing at a one eighth of an inch seam allowance that's three mil Okay, so now we've done our padded device pocket and we're ready to add our hook and loop tape. Now we just need to cut the soft loop half. So you've got half that is scratchy hook and half that is soft loop. And we're gonna cut this to one and a half inches long. That's 3.8 centimeters. Okay. We just cut that to size. Ignore the scratchy bit for the minute. We'll come back to that. And then we're gonna place this on the right side. So I've got my fleece on my lining side. The nice side that doesn't have fleece, I'm not saying the lining is not nice. <laughs> on the other side, this is it where we're gonna add the hook and loop tape. Okay, so I'm gonna add a bit of double-sided basting tape to the back of here just to hold it in place while we sew. I'm gonna add a couple of strips, I think just to stop it moving around. And then we're gonna place it in the center, just underneath the top stitching that we've just done. 
So to find my centre, I'm going to fold my panel in half, mark that with a pin. And then place this just under the line of the top stitching in the centre there. Now, if you want to be scientific about it, you could um, measure this to make sure that that is centered. It's pretty good. And then press that down once you're happy with it. And we're going to sew around the outside of the um, of the tape. Um, now, to get a really nice, neat finish on this, you need to be sewing it that scant one eighth of an inch away from the edge um, so you're falling in that there's a little um, line either side of the fuzzy bit so try and sew right in the middle of that and whatever your um, edge of your tape is lined up against on your foot try and remember so that when you turn the corner you can also line up the edge of that with that same place on your foot um, and I'm going to start in the bottom edge actually just so that it's nice and neat and any back stitching is hidden um, and I'm going to use I'm going to use a slightly smaller stitch length than I would just so that it can be a little bit neater Now you'll notice we've gone through both layers here and that's just to add a little bit of extra strength to this tape because if you drop your bag or your bag tumbles you don't want that risking pulling off of your um, fabric because that could let your device um, fall free okay so we've gone through both layers there Right, that's nice and neat now okay so now we're going to do our device tab right so now we need our device tab 
which I have here. And I'm again using my tartan fabric for this one. And you're gonna draw a line down the center lengthwise. Okay, so it's four inches wide or 10 centimeters wide. And you're gonna draw a line two inches away from the long edges or five centimeters. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these long edges into the center there and give it a little press. Just to keep those edges in nice and neat. Okay, so I've just folded one edge in to the center, give it a little press, and then the other side as well. Nice little press. Nice and neat. Okay, now we're gonna fold this in half. Now what I like to do actually is, um, if you've got something, what have I got? These scissors, for example. Now make sure you're not doing this on the sharp edge. But if you line the blade, the not sharp edge of the blade up there, and then fold your tab in half, pulling against it with the not sharp edge of your blade, then all those creases and corners are gonna sit really nice and neat. And I can give that a little press. Just means that you don't get any bunching up of the layers in there where we folded that. So you might want to use, I don't know, if you've got a metal ruler or something similar to that, um, then that would also work really well. Now we're gonna top stitch around the three folded edges of this. You don't need to do the um, open edge because we're gonna be sewing that into the seam. And I'm gonna sew at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's three mil. And I'm gonna use my top stitching stitch length. Okay, now on the back, whichever side you decide is gonna be the back, we're gonna add the scratchy side of our hook and loop tape. So our hook side, uh, that's this one. Now we are gonna need two inches of this one, that's five centimeters. Now all the measurements are on your pattern. Okay, so do check the if you miss any of this or if I don't give you the exact measurement. Okay. And I'm gonna do exactly the same as I did before. Now, which side was my right side and which one? Oh, I've lost track. I'll use this as my wrong side. Now we're gonna put this one lengthwise along that tab. Okay, so our one on our pocket is horizontal this one's going to be vertical and it just means that that can account for whatever bulk you put into that pocket and it will adjust okay so again add some tape to the back there and then i'll stitch it into place and it's going through both layers as we did before just again for that added strength but if you're using a contrast thread like me, you might want to choose um, maybe a matching thread or um, so really, really, really carefully to make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, so I'm gonna line that up right in the center. Oh, just slightly short of my top stitching. So the short edge is just under my um, top stitching. Oh, there we go. That's better. 
okay and I'm going to stitch that into place as I did before So just trim those threads, make sure that's nice and neat. And then we're going to place this on top of this panel here, matching up the centres. So if I haven't got my centre, I'll just mark that now. Um, let me mark it properly with a pencil so that we can see it afterwards. That'll be helpful, won't it? Or some chalk. Because we'll need that again, I expect. And then pop your device tab with the hook and loop tape down, matching up the centers. Now don't panic if this doesn't match the bottom of your loop tape. As we said, there's a bit of extra wiggle space there so that it will handle what, the bulk of whatever it is that you put in there. Now I'm just going to stitch this along the top and I'm gonna back stitch I'm gonna baste it but I am gonna back stitch at the start and the end again just for that extra strength um, when we're using the bag just to know that that device tab is not going to come unstuck within the seam because um, that is an area of stress there Okay. Right, so that's both of our lining panels done. All we need to do now is our lining gusset, and then we'll have a really good idea of how our lining's gonna look. So what we need next is our gusset pieces. So you've got your side gussets and your base gusset in your lining fabrics. Now we're going to add the straight edge of our side gussets onto the short edge of the base gusset. And you could do these both together if you want. You could do these both at the same time. I generally do. So pinned one, pin the second, and then I'm going to sew them both at the same time. And we're going to use our regular stitch length and our regular seam allowance for this, which is three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And then we can press these seam allowances open. Now you've got a choice. You can either press the seam allowances open and just leave it at that, or you can press the seam allowances open and then top stitch either side of the seam or one side of the seam, just for a bit of extra interest there. So it's your choice, it's up to you what you'd prefer to do. I think I am going to, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna press my seam allowances open so that I get nice 
neat finish. And then I guess because I've got my contrast thread in, I will top stitch either side and hope that I do it really nice and neat because I think that'll be a nice added feature there. A um, bit of extra interest inside my lining. Uh, so I've pressed one open and get the other one open. And then give that a little press as well. And then I'm going to top stitch both sides of this, I think. I'm going to try really, really, really hard to make it nice and neat. Uh, and I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch or three mil away from the seam that we've just sewn. Okay, so that's our gusset done, ready to attach to our lining main panels now. So first things first, we need to find the centre point of this gusset on both sides. And I'm going to mark that. Um, actually, I'm going to mark it on the wrong side with a pencil because that's the side I'm going to see while I'm attaching it into the line and main panels. And you can use pins or clips, your choice on this one. Um, and it doesn't matter which panel you're putting first, the one with the device pocket or the zip pocket, doesn't really matter, your choice. But what we are going to do is match up, oh, I've lost my center point on this one. I'm going to match up the centers first. Uh, I'm going to add a pin in there just so that I know that that is the centre. I'm going to add, match the centres first. And I think I'll use some clips for this one. And then just these straight edges along the bottom. Not going quite as far as the corner. And then pull this top edge round to meet the top of the side panel here. And do a little bit down the straight edge. Just leave these corners, these bottom curved corners unpinned, unclipped at the minute. And then the other side. And then this will give you a really good indication of what easing you need to do to be able to get these, um, this gusset around these bottom corner curves so that it sits nice and taut. You don't want it to be, um, to go around them too easily because otherwise you find you get extra fabric and you get a few extra puckers. But if it's slightly too short, that is perfect because then you can snip into the seam allowance. Um, just on the gusset. Oh dear. Might need my scissor sharpening. So just in the seam allowance around this gusset. And see how that fits around the curve now. Need a little bit more. Just help that sit. Careful not to do too much, otherwise it becomes too big just enough for you to ease it around that curve nice and neat. So that the edges of the fabric meet, these raw edges meet. Okay. Now when you're sewing that, you can just pull this extra bit of fabric flat so that you can sew round 
on a nice flat straight bit of fabric and this extra bulk you could just pull that out of the way um, so I'll just trim the seam allowance of this side as well I'll go from this side just making lots of little snips into that seam allowance see how that fits a bit more a little bit more just to help it sit nice and neat okay just check that that matches up that does so i can clip that into place if you're not 100 percent confident about this you can always baste this before you um, you can hand baste it before you sew it but just as long as this extra bulk of the fabric here you can pull down out of the way so that the seam line is sitting nice and flat then you won't get any of those dreaded puckers when you're sewing this into place All right so we're going to sew this with our regular stitch length and our regular seam allowance for the first inch or so i believe let me just double check before i tell you that Yes, we are. Okay, so we're gonna use our regular 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance for the first inch, and then we're gonna taper to a half inch seam allowance, that's 1.2 centimeters, until we get back over here, and then for the last inch or so, go back to our regular stitch length of 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter. Okay, so once you've finished sewing that, just have a little check that there's no puckers in these seam lines, okay? And don't worry too much if it does seem like there's a pucker until you pull it out straight. That just means that we need to take away the extra bulk from that seam line. So um, it looks like there's some puckers until I turn it out properly and then there's no puckers. So what we're gonna do now is trim these curves with some pink inches alternatively you can notch it if you prefer to do notches you can do that but i prefer to um, use my pink inches because i'm particularly lazy and it works just as well so i just trim in the seam allowance of those curves and that's going to just take away that extra bulk and the second one and it's going to help it sit nice and neat it's going to sort of release the pressure a little bit on that fabric that is curving around the corner and then when you check it your um, potential puckers should all have disappeared because you've removed that bulk and then all we're going to do for the second half is do exactly the same so we're going to pin or clip the gusset to this panel you can if you want to pin this zip pocket out of the way again if you're not confident that you won't be able to catch it pin that out of the way again start at the center of this gusset and work along the straight edges first and then the top edges and then clip into the um, 
seam allowance of the curve if you need to. Okay. So I'm working my way around. We're just going to try and ignore the first panel, pretend that that's not there. So just pull it out of the way, however you need to. And you might find that this one fits differently around the curve from the other one, even though they're both exactly the same size, but the difference is that you haven't got the bulk on this one of the device pocket and vice versa, depending on which one you did first, you might find that it fits slightly different. So this one, actually, I think I need maybe just a couple of snips into the seam allowance to help that fit around the curve rather than the multiple ones that I needed first time round. So we're just making sure that we can line up the edges and that it sits nice and flat on that stitch line, on that seam, seam line there. I'm just adding a couple of stitches in a few places just to help that stretch around just so we can have a nice smooth curve and as I said if you're not confident that you can stitch this without getting puckers then please just baste it it's okay you can baste it by hand that's completely fine okay so we're doing exactly the same starting at the top back stitching regular stitch length regular seam allowance and then we're going to taper to our slightly larger seam allowance after an inch or so Right, once you're happy with that, again, have a little look. Just check that there's no puckers in around that seam line. And then if you're happy with it, you can give it a little trim with a pink and shears or notch into that seam allowance just to reduce the bulk there. And that gives you a real good feeling of how the lining is gonna look in your bag once you sort of peer into it a really good idea of how your setup's going to be um, and I quite like that right okay so we are nearly nearly finished with our lining all that we need to do now is add our zip bridge but we're going to stop here for a minute so that you can catch up and we'll come back and start with the zip bridge next time Welcome back to part two of our Morgan Messenger Bag Sew Along. And at this point you should have your lining panels complete and the gusset inserted. So you should have a zip pocket, a cargo pocket, device pocket and device tab sewn into the lining panels and the gusset added. Okay, now we're gonna do the zip bridge so that we can um, form the closure for the bag. What you'll need is your longer zip, your longer um, number five zip and your zip bridge pieces. Now you should have two exterior, my exterior is the gray and two lining, my lining is this dark green. Um, and all we've done here is just folded 
these zip teeth over at a 90 degree angle until the zip tape folds along the edge of the teeth there and meets on this side and then I've just hand stitched that into place to keep that together. I've also sewn along the end of my zip here to make sure that my zip pull doesn't come off while we're, um, while we're working with it. Great, okay. And then on our exterior pieces, I've drawn a line at a quarter of an inch or six mil away from each short end. And then on the lining pieces, I've drawn that same lines, but on the wrong side. So on my exterior, it's on the right side. On my lining, it's on the wrong side. And then we're gonna add a piece of double-sided tape between those two marks on the right side of the zip bridge. I'm gonna try and actually meet the mark this time. Don't worry if you don't get it quite all the way along, it doesn't matter. As long as you don't go over the, um, as long as you don't go over the lines, it's better to be slightly too short than slightly too long. And then we'll take this backing off and we're gonna place our zip right sides down along the top edge there. And I'm gonna place this, the edge of the teeth, just shy of that quarter inch line. Okay, so they're not quite on the quarter inch line, but very, very close. And then we are going to add another bit of basting tape along the top between those two marks again and you can see the second mark below the zip so make sure not to go too far and then we're going to place the lining on top right sides down and we're lining it up nice and neat it should hopefully match Okay, now we're gonna sew through all of these layers using our, um, let me double check, our regular seam allowance, our regular 3 eighths of, a seam allow uh, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, that's one centimeter. But we're gonna sew from this open end of the zip here, all the way along there using our regular seam allowance until we get to this quarter inch line here at the open end of the zip. And then we're gonna sew, pivot, and sew along the line. So we'll end up with this short edge and this long edge sewn, but this short edge open. I'm gonna try that with my walking foot and see if I can do it with that, um, rather than swapping over to my zip foot. If you need to swap over to your zip foot, then do that now. So I'm gonna start sewing at that quarter inch line. Don't go over it. We want to leave that end completely open. Once we've seen that, just double check that that looks nice and neat in that top corner. Looks nice and neat to me. And then we'll just take a little bit of the bulk out of this corner here. Just snip that across. Don't go too close to the stitches because it can pull out. Um, so just go close enough to remove what you need to. And then we'll turn that right sides out and just give that a little finger roll. Um, all we're doing here is just make sure that this is really nice and neat. So we'll turn it out and give it a little press. Don't worry about this open end just for the minute. Okay, so worry about making sure that the rest of this is nice and neat and looks good. This is what you're gonna see when you open the flap and you look into your bag, is this top zip bridge. 
this is going to be your main closure for the bag under the flap right that's nice and neat and pulled back away from the zip tee now this open end we're going to fold these under and if i swap over to this view you might be able to see a bit better so just fold these under and give it a little bit of a press with your fingers there and then do the same on the lining side a little bit of a press with your fingers and then we're going to fold these under and together so they match nice and neat like this okay if you've got any extra little bits poking out where they shouldn't be unfold it pull it down a bit better and then refold it and you're just trying to make sure that those ends are completely even and then give it a little press you don't want to be seeing your lining fabric peeking through on the right side that's what you're aiming for here okay so all i've done is i've folded those and pressed those under sorry i didn't change your back from the camera view i just wanted to make sure that i could do that nice and neat to show you what it look, should look like and then we're going to start at this open end and we're going to top stitch along both short ends or the short ends along the long end back along the short end as well using whichever stitch length you want for top stitching and we're going to sew at an eighth of an inch away from the um, from the edge of the fabric that's three mil Okay, so that should be nice and neat all around then and we're going to do the second side of the zip just check i've got a slight wibble there no that looks fine okay so you can choose to leave this zipped up or unzipped i think it's much easier to do it unzipped okay so i'm going to unzip mine now we'll need our second pieces and again we're going to add the basting tape in between these two lines along the top edge same as we did before we're just going to try and pretend that the first side with the zip attached doesn't exist anymore um, until the end and then all of a sudden da, it exists again <laughs> so this time we Oh, need to turn it around so that you can match this to the other raw edge and that's right sides down with the end of the teeth just shy of that line okay so as long as the fabric is right sides together with the zip you're on the right track and then add another line of basting tape between those two lines And then we'll add the lining on top. Okay. We're going to sew this exactly the same as we did the first half. And then um, that will be our lining bridge done. Oh, sorry, zip bridge done. Okay, so in this case, because we've flipped it around we're going to start at the open end along this short end and then along the long end and we're going to stop at this second line at this end okay so we're closing up this short end first
make sure you don't go over that second line when you get to it and then again we're going to double check this corner is nice and neat yep lovely and then we're going to take some of this bulk away and then we can turn it out make sure that's nice and neat and turn it back now we had this close-up view for the last one so I'll take you out on the other view so you can see it from this angle as well so we're just making sure that that end is nice and neat so I'm going to press that side first because we know that's nice and even oh why oh, I got caught on my foot again and then this second end this is where we need to fold the seam allowances back or fold along that line that quarter inch line these bits that are open fold along it make sure it's nice and really neat and press down and then back on itself I haven't done that very well actually if I'm honest <laughs> let's fold it down and give it a little press with my finger now do the same on that side there we go okay once you're happy with that I'm sure you won't be fiddling as much as me I think it's just because I've got a very very dark contrast fabric on the lining and pop over to the ironing board and give that a little press set that in place if you want to um, what I have done before is I've made sure that I'm happy with it and stuck a pin through it in through the ironing board to hold it in place while I steam around it and then finish it off with a little press right I'm happy with that finally and now I'm gonna do my top stitch in the same as we did on the other side Just make sure that all lines up nice and neat you can give that a little press don't worry too much about these raw edges they're going to be sewn into our fabric now all that remains for us to do on this zip bridge is add a um a zip end here i'm just going to nip off and get my zip end and my screwdrivers and i'll come back and we'll fit that okay so to fit these you will probably want a bit of glue um, and I've got my um, magnetic screwdriver, my zip end, and my screw. Try not to lose those screws, although they are pretty secure just with a bit of glue. Now what I like to do is I turn the zip over and then I fold one half back as far as the teeth. And then I fold the other half in half and then back as far as the teeth. So it makes a nice neat little package of zip tape that is just as wide as the zip teeth trim off any straggly bits of zip tape there okay but your zip tape should be nicely folded in just one little sort of bundle there just double check the fitting with your zip end before you um, before you fit it that fits nice now I'm going to um, I'm just going to add a clip to that to hold that in place because I'm quite happy with how that is I'll be able to do it again I know but 
um, hopefully it will stay in place. Now I'm going to add a little dab of glue into my zip end. Don't worry if it's right at the top, the zip will push it down inside. And then all we're going to do is we're going to shove, oh dear, I knew that was going to happen. We're going to shove this zip, the end of this zip, as far into that zip end as we can while still maintaining this lovely, beautiful package of rolled zip tape. You pop it in as far as you can. And then we'll add our zip, um, sorry, the screw. Now these are self-piercing screws, so they should go through your zip tape. If you get to a point and you find it's not, then you might want to take it out poke a hole through with your awl and then screw it in again. Now that is very secure because we've added our glue and now the screw through the zip tape and that glue. So just double check that that looks nice and neat and then your zip bridge is done. We're just gonna add that into our lining now along the top. So I'll pop these bits away. So if you retrieve your lining and on your zip bridge, whilst it's zipped up still I would, fold it in half and find that centre point of the bridge. And on the other side as well, just so you've got it marked on both sides. You can make sure that you're putting this in completely centred. Um, okay, didn't do that very well there. How hard can it be to add some pins? <laughs> now you need to think about which panel you want to be on the front side to you or the back side when you open it. And when you open it, do you want to open it from left to right or right to left? Okay, so however you apply the zip bridge now is how your bag is going to be. Now I prefer to have my device facing me, so I'm going to flip it round so that my zip pocket is on the back away from me and my device pocket is on the front towards me. And I like to open my bags from left to right. So I'm therefore going to pop this in so that it's done up now at the moment, but so that my zip pull is on the left. And it would help if I had the centres marked, wouldn't it? Or have, I have, don't worry. <laughs> so matching centres then along the top there. Pop a pin in. I can see that I'm going to be opening my zip from left to right and the device is going to be on the front panel closest to me. Now if you prefer it the other way around, then swap it round. Okay, there's no rules that say which way you have to have a bag opening or which panel you need to have a pocket on. I just find that um, having the device panel closest to me means that when it's um, got a device in, it's not sagging towards you and you can't get in anywhere else. It's, it's almost out of the way. Okay, and then on the other side, I'm just pinning these in to the line in there. So um, on the inside, let me undo this so you can see. On the inside, it's lining fabric to lining fabric for me. So I've got my lining main panel in there and I'm just pinning these along the top of the lining main panels. And we've made this out of our exterior fabric so that when you open the flap, it will still show you the exterior fabric. If your exterior fabric is particularly thick though, I do recommend making these out of your lining fabric. Now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna sew along there within the seam allowance to base them into place. Um, now I use, for this, I use my regular stitch length um, and we're basting at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, that's six mil but I like to back stitch at the start and the end and use my regular stitch length just for a bit of added strength so that I know inside that top seam at the end 
this will be nice and secure. And there's no danger of it fraying or coming out, coming undone. Okay, so unzip. Then you've got a bit of wiggle room. You can fit this under your sewing machine then, or under your presser foot. That really is as simple as that. We've just sewn that into the top there of our lining. And that is our lining complete. That's how our lining is gonna look when we open the flap of our bag and look inside. I think that's quite nice to look at. Okay, so you can either prop it up somewhere for you to admire or you can put it to one side for the minute. So I'm gonna put mine to one side while we get on with the exterior of the bag and we're gonna start with the flap, okay? Right, the next part we need then is our flap zip pocket. This is L1, L2 and L3. And we're gonna need our flap exterior panel. And you haven't attached that to the foam yet, don't panic, that is quite right. Just gonna give that a little press where it's been sitting, waiting to be sewn, waiting patiently. Now this is exactly the same as the interior zip pocket, exactly what we've just done. We've got our last zip and we've got our facing, our zip pocket bottom and our zip pocket top. Now you can see on this one, our zip pocket top is quite a bit longer actually than the um, interior one. Don't worry, that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so we're gonna do as we did before. We are gonna draw our box on the back of the facing. Um, the same as we did before, yep. Three quarters of an inch from each long edge and one inch from each short edge. That is two centimeters from each long edge and two and a half centimeters from each short edge. And that should, in theory, give us a box that is six and three quarter inches long for small, 17 centimetres, or eight and a half inches long for the large, that's 21 and a half centimetres. So we should end up with our box, like we did for the lining. And then we'll draw a line down the centre and a triangle at each end. Now we are going to place this onto the exterior flap. Okay, and we're going to place it with the bottom edge of the zip pocket facing an eighth of an inch, that's three mil from the bottom edge of the flap. Now I'm going to line up on my mat actually, so that I can line up from each side. And this is going to go one and three quarter inches from the left hand side. So let's make sure that we're on the right track here. So I'm lining up the lines on my ruler with the lines on my mat to make sure that I'm putting it at exactly the right place that it should be. And then once I'm happy with it, I can add a couple of pins just to hold it in place until we have sewn it. Okay. Now, it's up to you where you start sewing. I'm gonna start, um, I don't know, probably around there-ish, so that it's not quite so noticeable. But just consider this to be a regular lining zip pocket that we've already done, just sideways, I guess. So we've done this before, we know what we're doing, we're just sewing around the outside of the box. 
going as close into the corners as we can using our regular stitch length. And then the same as we did before, sorry, just trying to get my knife. We're gonna cut a little slit down this center line. And then use our scissors to snip up the line and into the corners. I use my little snips, I think, to get right into the corner today. Try not to snip through your stitching, but do go as close as you can into that corner. Excellent. Okay, now we're gonna steam press those stitches and then turn them through the same as we did for the um, interior pocket. So I'm gonna steam press them first. Make sure they're set really nice into the fabric and then I'll pull it down and, and away and up and away and into the short edges too. And then you can push your facing through. Again, I'm gonna start with the middle, same as I did before. So start with the middle, finger roll it and give it a little press. And then finger roll it in the middle of the other side, give it a little press. And then I can pull the ends through as well. Okay. Now, if you're struggling to get your head around the fact that this is a zip pocket that's vertical on the flap just turn it however you need to until it looks um well like you're used to i suppose or, or sort of normal to you don't get don't get panicked by it okay right okay so that's nice and flat there that's our facing added to our flap so that can go to one side for the moment and next we're going to use our zip pocket bottom and zip pocket top so we're going to add our tape to the upper edge of the zip pocket bottom no yes <laughs> but this time the only difference is the pull is going to be on the left Okay, so however it was on the lining, it was on the right, on the lining. Ignore that, we're gonna put the pull on the left. So zip pocket, bottom, upper edge of the zip pocket bottom, pop a bit of tape on, and then we're gonna put the zip with the pull to the left. Okay, and we're gonna sew that into place, same as we did for the lining one. Oh, hang on, I think I've taken my zip pull a bit too far here. I think I've pulled it off the teeth. Just wiggle it back into place a sec. It's no good, is it? Pause you for a minute while I sort this out. Right, that's better. I'll put it on the other way around now. 
better close that again so I'll just do a few stitches over the end to make sure that stays together and I'll do the other end as well right so this time we are going to put it as we had it before right sides up on the zip pocket bottom with the zip pull on the left and then we're going to sew it into place using our um, scant quarter inch seam allowance that's about five mil And we are just going to fold that back, give it a little press, same as we did for the interior pocket, making sure that that fabric is staying away from the zip, nice and neat. Then we want our zip pocket top and we're going to add our basting tape to the upper edge and then turn it 180 degrees if you've got directional fabric. Right, same as we did before. Basin tape, turn it 180 degrees. And then add your um, zip again, this time with the zip pull on the left. And line up all of those raw edges. And then we're gonna stitch that into place as well. And we're just gonna fold this back, press it away from the zip. Make sure that that fabric doesn't get caught when we're using the zip. Got my zip pull caught in the way there when I was pressing, so I just moved it out of the way, pressed it again. Right, now the only difference to the exterior zip pocket and the flat zip pocket is that now, instead of having a zip pocket top and a bottom, we're gonna turn it so that the zip pocket top is on the left. Okay. So you should have the wrong sides of the fabric and the right side of the zip with the zip pull at the top and the right sides of the fabric and the wrong side of the zip Okay, so your zip pocket top has now become the left hand panel and the zip pocket bottom the right hand panel. And then we're gonna add this to the flap. So we'll add the basting tape to the back of this facing as we did before. And I'm glad that on this panel, at least I'm using a um, fabric that matches my thread. So you shouldn't see too many wonky stitches if I do some wonky stitches, because this is gonna be right in the front of your bag. This is, um, this is one that's worth taking time over and getting right. Okay, so once we've added that tape, so zip pull at the top, the longer piece on the left, gonna add this over the top, and we're lining up the bottom of the facing with the bottom of these pieces of fabric. Now this one, you just wanna make sure that your zip is 100%, completely 100% centered in this box. Okay, so make sure that your fabric is perfectly spaced either side of the zip teeth, because this is what's gonna be seen on the front of your bag. Now that looks pretty good to me. Once you're happy, give it a little press down to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna start uh, probably in this bottom corner just so that I can be sure um, that 
if I do sort of cross over or go a bit wibbly, it won't be so noticeable. So we're going to start here. Okay, so once you're happy with that, then all we do is we fold it over to the back and fold our maybe zip pull to the middle, fold our zip pocket top, the bigger piece, over to make the smaller piece, flatten that out. That's just to give you this extra bit of fabric, is just to give you a bit of space in the pocket that when you put something in the pocket it doesn't distort the flap out of shape and we're just going to pin this in place and sew around the outside as we did for the lining so we're going to start here we're going to sew to the corner up to this corner and back to here and back stitch at the end you don't need to leave a turning gap in this one because we're not turning anything through so we're just going to sew all the way around there okay going to add a pin. Make sure you're not sewing through the flap, you're just sewing through these pocket pieces. Okay. Um, right, actually I'll sew on this side, I'll pull the flap fabric back. So we're using our regular stitch length, our regular seam allowance. Right, so that should be looking nice and neat. We'll um, take these pins out. And then we're gonna see where we can reduce a bit of bulk in this zip. Now, where this side of your stitching, where you've got this extra bit of zip, you can just snip that off completely. Okay, you can completely snip that off this side of the stitching because it's being held in by this bit of stitching and this bit of stitching as well we're going around the box so you can take that out and that will reduce bulk when you are sewing your flap together 
Now, smooth this out. Make sure you are happy with how this looks. I'm just gonna give that a little press just to make sure that that's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna add the foam to this, our stabilizer. So grab your piece of foam that you've got left over. Mine has got a little bit fluffy since cutting out for some reason. And then lay your flap on top of the foam. Make sure everything's really, really nicely smoothed out there and your zip pocket will meet your, um, or go over the edges of your flap, okay? If you're making a large, you might find that the zip pocket goes right the way out to the edge there, and that's okay. That just means that you're gonna anchor your zip pocket into the seams of your flap to make sure that it can just carry the weight of any devices that you put in the front pocket. Or if you're a book carrier, it can just take the weight of your book. So I'm just smoothing this flap over the foam. And just making sure that everything's nice and flat inside. So we're gonna sandwich this pocket in between the um, flap and the foam, the exterior of your flap and the foam. So we just want to make sure that underneath everything is nice and neat and tidy. Smoothing all the way to the edge. And to the corner there. Okay, now we're gonna baste around the outside of this using our longest stitch length. Um, exactly the same as you did earlier when you added your foam to your other pieces. So we're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, that's six mil seam allowance, and I'm using my longest stitch length, which for me is a number six. then all we're going to do is just trim the foam from these seam allowances as we usually would do just to reduce the bulk and then we can um, get on with our flap so what I like to do is I like to fold my foam back and just pull it back at a bit of an angle and then just trim along the stitching line Try not to go through your stitching, but if you do, it really doesn't matter massively. As long as your foam is being held in enough to keep it in place while you're sewing, then that's okay. It does help um, to have your basting stitches in because um, it helps flatten the foam down slightly. I can see as I'm going round, my zip pocket is nicely anchored into this um, seam allowance here. And this is just the um, basting seam allowance. So once we do the actual proper seam allowance, it will be nicely attached there. So I'm just gonna trim this little corner off where I've got a bit of zip pocket poking out. And then I'm just gonna pop this to one side while we do our magnetic snaps. And then we can finish our flap. So first thing we need to do is find the center, if you haven't already. Find the centre of your flap, and I'll mark that on the wrong side. Did that and immediately lost those centre folds. There they are. Okay, 
then one there. Now, to place these magnetic snaps, there's uh, different measurements based on which size you are making. Um, I'm making this small, so I'll follow the measurements for the small. They're both one and a half inches from the bottom. I'm gonna use the washers to mark the placement for these. Now we only need the male halves. So that's the halves that have got the sticky out bit. So if you separate those bits, I'm gonna keep hold of the male bit and the female bit, I'm just gonna to put to one side with two of the washers. So we need two male halves and two washers for the flap. Put the other ones there so I don't lose them. Now we are gonna put the center of these washers, therefore the center of the snaps, at these distances. So one and a half inches, 3.8 centimeters from the bottom for me. And they're measured from the center. So minus three and three quarter inches from the center. So what am I doing? One and a half. So I'm gonna line it up on my ruler. One and a half and three and three quarters is there. And that is where the center of my washer is gonna go and I can mark the prong lines then. And then the same on this, one and a half and three and three quarters. Is right about there. And again, mark the prong lines there. Now you'll need some scraps of foam, which I have got here. Oh, nearly lost my pencil. You'll need four in total. You only need two for this bit, but if you want to cut all four together, you can. That's okay. Put the two aside for later. And we're going to use the washers again to mark on these scraps of foam. And this is just to give it a bit of extra strength and stop it pulling through from the back. Because you're adding these through just one layer of fabric. You're not adding it through foam like you do on the um, when you add the other half to the front panel. So we need for this some fray check and a knife and also some duct tape. And I'm gonna just cut along my prong lines that I've marked. And I'm doing this on this side so that you can see, but quite often I do it on the right side. Double check those have come through. Yep. And then I'm gonna add a little dab of fray check just to make sure that those lines are not gonna grow any further than we want them to. I cut through my prong lines on these scraps of foam. As well, just to give it a bit of extra strength. And then on the right side, we'll push the magnetic snap through from the right side, through those slits that we've made. Make sure that's nice and pushed down. Add your scrap of foam. You probably want a slightly larger scrap of foam than this, to be honest. I obviously didn't cut that very well. And then your washer. Now, when I set snaps now, um, I actually use, um, I actually bend the prongs inwards now. And I used to think it didn't really matter, but I did see a bag where the prongs were bent outwards and over time they'd slipped out of the fabric. So now I always bend my prongs inwards so that they're pulling on themselves. And that's the only thing that they're pulling against. And just make sure those are nicely pressed down. And then add a scrap of tape to the back. And this just adds an extra layer of security, but it also stops those prongs rubbing through to the fabric underneath or behind. Just keeps it, um, keeps it nice. You want to think about long-term use, really. And you don't want these prongs rubbing through. Okay, so push through from the right side. Foam stabiliser, washer, 
and then we're going to bend the prongs inwards and the same on this side and then we'll add a scrap of our tape again just to make sure that's nice and neat held in place and we can pop those away okay next job we need to do is place these right sides together matching all of these edges and we're going to sew these together apart from that top edge just going to sew the sides and the curves have these right sides together and we'll just clip these together temporarily while we sew Now we're going to sew with our regular stitch length and our regular seam allowance and then we're going to clip the curves turn them through and top stitch make sure to back stitch at the start and the end Okay, then we need to clip these curves, so I'm just going to use my pinking shears. Just clip all the way around. Just take all this extra bulk out. double check that side yep lovely and then we can just turn this through right sides out hopefully we'll have a lovely neat flap with a nice zip pocket attached that nice smooth down now if you're using a high contrast fabric combination like me you're probably going to want to from the right side smooth this down so that you can be sure that there's no lining peeking through got a bit of extra thread there let me just take that out wherever that's come from always sneaks through doesn't it a little bit of extra thread there we go okay so just make sure that's nice and smooth give it a little steam press now when you're doing this you want to be sure to avoid the zip and the zip pull and where you're going over the feet just be really really careful in fact when i go over my feet i use a little tea towel just to be sure that I'm not going over those. Don't want to press through too, um, too hard to the right side. Okay, so check that from that side, yep. Add a little tea towel, just to press from this side along where my magnetic snaps are, just to give it a little bit of extra cushioning. 
and then we're going to top stitch around the outside of the curve there before we do what i like to do is just smooth the lining up make sure that the lining is nice and in place before we start our top stitching and then it means that any lining that would usually peek through is not really peeking through so i'm going to start at the top edge top stitch all the way down and around the curves take your time doing this make sure it's nice and neat check my pockets okay yeah a few um i'm going to switch to my top stitch length which for me is around three and a half um, my regular stitch length is about three i'm only going slightly higher and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch or three mil away from the edge all the way around nice take your time nice and neat nice and slowly in this one Now if you want to, you can baste along the top of the flap just to keep those layers together nice and neat. Right, let's get started on adding our flap to our bag. So what we need next is our last two back and device pockets, that's piece D. And you should have one exterior or contrast and one lining. Now, um, so I'm using my tartan as exterior as well. So I've got gray and tartan together. Now we need to find the center point of our flap, first of all. So fold that in half and find the center point of your flap and you can mark that however you want. I'm just going to use a pin so I can see where it is. Now on the, um, right, so this is my exterior one. I need to find the center of that as well. Right there, let me mark that with some chalk. Oh, oh dear, there it is. I lost it then. Now you're going to pop your flap right side down on top of your exterior back and device pocket now if you want to you can baste that into place now before you add the lining panel or you can just go ahead and add your lining panel on top and then sew them all together it's your choice Okay, so just match up those centers and all the layers. We're going to be sewing through all, all of these layers. Now the flap will not quite meet the edges. Okay, that's right. And we're going to sew through that using our regular seam allowance and our regular stitch length back stitch at the start and the end. Okay, 
Now, I think the best thing to do actually is to fold this back with it open like that and give it a nice press and then fold it this way and give it a nice press and then fold them wrong sides together and attach them together, the two panels. I've just got a bit of extra stitch in there from my basting. So I'm just gonna take these stitches out um, and it goes halfway along. So I'm not quite sure why I've got some that only go halfway along, but it's better halfway along than all the way along, isn't it? Um, I'm taking those out. Let me just double check that that is definitely caught in the seam. Yeah, it's fine. So I'm not sure how I've got those stitches there. Never mind, be our little secret. <laughs> okay. Just take those out there, pull them out from this side. Uh, I think it might actually just be a bit of extra stitching, a bit of extra thread there. Right. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it open and press from each side while it's open and then fold it um, and press it again. So I'll press from the lining side first because that's the thinner side. There's no um, stabiliser in the seam allowances for that. Give that a little press. And then with it open again, fold, um, sorry, press from the exterior side. And then fold those two matching wrong sides together. Give it a little press. I'm pressing from both sides here. I'm gonna press from the lining side and the exterior side, just to make sure that all of those edges, those seams are nicely turned out and especially in these top corners as well where we haven't got the flap so maybe the um, back pockets are tempted to just sort of um, not quite fully roll out so just make sure those are nicely pressed out as well okay now we're going to add a line of top stitching um, along the top of this back pocket. So you've got the flap attached, got these two back pocket pieces here with that sandwich in between. Now we're gonna add a line of top stitching just to keep everything nice and neat and in place and also as a little bit of an extra added feature. So I'm gonna sew this at a one eighth of an inch away from the edge. That's three mil and I'm using my top stitching length. we go lovely nice and neat there now that has reminded me though before I go much further I need to swap over to my larger needle because I've still got my small needle in um, and we are going to be sewing through exterior layers and things now so I'm going to swap that over you might have already done that been nice and organized done it already if not, now is your chance to do that as well. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we need our one of our main panels, our exterior main panels, should have two of these left behind now. Our number of pieces is decreasing quite, quite well. So we'll pop this right sides up and then add this back pocket slash flap panel. Now, because I've got checks, let me just double check that, yeah just in case one of them was slightly wonky. I wanted to use the slightly wonky one. 
on the back here because it's not really going to be seen. Um, now, the other thing I'm going to do is just make sure that that is nicely lined up with the centers. If you want to base these back pockets together before you do this, you can. Um, you can pause me now and go ahead and do that. I'm just going to add these though as they are. So I'm just making sure that these are all nicely lined up. I'm going to clip it and then I'm going to flip it over and double check that the thing is hanging over. And we're going to base this into place around the outside. And um, then that will just become one panel. Okay, no, that's fine. Oh, a slight overhang this side. So I'm just going to trim that up slightly before we go any further. It's okay if it doesn't quite match. But we just want to make sure that it all matches ready for when we're actually going to be sewing this together so we don't end up with any missed bits. Right, so add those clips back on again. Okay. So I'm just going to use a basting stitch length for this really, my longest stitch length. And I'm going to back stitch at the start and the end just to add that extra strength in um, as we did earlier. Just so that when this bag is in use, it's got a little bit of extra added strength. So that's nicely secured and now that forms our hidden back pocket under the flap so when the bag's closed you wouldn't even know that that was there really and then you open that and ta-da you've got pocket which is excellent right so what we can do now let me double check the order of this um okay let's add our snaps next so the last main panel the last exterior main panel we'll need to find our center points for this again so i'm going to add a little pin in to make sure that i don't forget where it is and in the top as well just for this bit of construction i just want to be sure that i'm putting things in the right place uh, now that doesn't match up on my check on that side. Let's see if I've done it. Yeah, I did it slightly wonky. As long as we're on this day. <laughs> right, so the magnetic snaps. We've got two magnetic snaps left and two scraps of foam here. Let's check the placement for these. So these are going from the center, the same as we did before. So these are going to go two and a quarter inches from the bottom. If you're sewing the large, that's actually two and three quarter inches from the bottom. So just pay attention to the measurements in the pattern rather than the measurements that I'm telling you here. So two and a quarter inches from the bottom and three and three quarter from the center. And three and three quarters from the center. Make sure you're lining up your um, ruler along the edges of your um of your panel here uh three and three quarter now this is going to be a bit tricky because my fabric is a little bit dark so what if i add a pin through it and i know that that is the position for the center of my magnetic snap i think i'll do do them one at a time because my fabric is so dark I'm thinking that I might lose my 
markings otherwise. Right, so I can get that in place directly over that pin and then remove the pin. That worked quite well. We'll do that again. Get my chalk flowing as a little chalk line. There we go. That was that was good. Uh, maybe I'll yeah, maybe I'll go through the whole process of each one individually just so that I don't risk losing it. I think that's it, isn't it? Tape, fray check, knife, that's all we need. So I'm just gonna cut my slits. This is exactly the same as we did on the flap. Except this time, because I'm going through the foam as well, I'm just gonna test my prongs through those slits before I add any fray check or anything. There we go, so. I know that they fit through, I can add my fray check now. And then pop those on. And then add my in, uh, extra scrap of foam. And then my washer, and I'll do the same for the other one. Do the second one now that I've got one installed and now I'm not going to lose that one two and a quarter and three and three quarters Okay, right, we've added those. Now we need to do our gusset. So we should have our plastic bag base and we should have two side gussets and one base gusset. Now before we sew those together, we're gonna center our bag base over our fabric bag base so center the plastic bag base over the fabric bag base I'm actually going to mark the centers of this with pins because I think that would be helpful for lining up so I'll just find the center on each of these four sides and this side as well, just to make this a little bit easier. If you're not worried about it not being too precise, you can just do this by sight, but um, I thought I'd better do it properly. Okay. Right, so that's my center points. Let's find my center on my bag base. So that is there. Uh, 
and my center is there. Right, okay, it's great. Now I've got a lovely thick cutting mat here that I can use to punch holes through. Um, hole punch, here it is. Now top tip, actually I'm gonna do this from the back. Top tip here. On the back, I'm gonna add a bit of duct tape to the back of my foam here. Bit of hair over. No, I'm not. I will add some, but not yet. I'm gonna leave it right there so I remember where it is. First of all, I'm gonna punch my holes and then I'm gonna add some duct tape. So let's make sure this is nice and centered again. Very indecisive of me, sorry. <laughs> right, so that is fine like that. That's nice and centered. Now we're gonna punch the holes uh, one feet from each, one inch from each long edge. That's 2.5 centimeters. And two inch from each short edge. Okay. So use your ruler to line up exactly where these are gonna go. And that is gonna go one inch, two inches in there, add a pin. And this one is gonna go one inch from there. And I'm gonna add a pin again. The beauty of using this plastic bag base is that actually feet go through it really, really well compared to the um, cheaper alternatives. Okay, we just mark that hole and just mark that hole. I think I'll do these two and then do the other two. Right, now I've punched those two. I make sure I go through the fabric as well, haven't I? Right, now I mark those two. I'm actually going to use my duct tape now. So I'm going to put a piece on my bag base, right side up, and a piece on my foam, also right side up, or foam side up. So I know at the end, when I go to put this piece of bag base in, I need to make sure that both those pieces of duct tape are facing up and they are matching one over the top of the other. And then I know that those holes are gonna line up perfectly with um, the plastic bag base as well. Right, I could have done, actually add in a little bit of tape just to hold it in place temporarily. So let's do that as well. So those two holes are lined up, add a bit of tape. And then we'll mark the second two, two inch and one inch. And that is five centimetres and two and a half centimetres as well if you're working in metric. That hole there. And that hole there. Just keeping my eye on that so it doesn't shift while I'm not looking. that's gone through. Not quite a little bit more on that one. Not quite, need to, oh wait, no it has a lie. Tell a lie. Right, so we need a dab of fray check on those feet holes. Now I'm gonna leave my um, pins in the center here um, just while we're working with this. So I'll keep my bag base to one side. Add a bit of fray check onto these feet holes from the right side. So that they're not going to grow while the bag is in use and the feet fall out. Tidy up a little bit. 
Okay. Now we need our side gussets here and we're gonna attach these to the base, base gusset along the straight edge as we did for the lining. So we're just going to use our regular stitch lengths, regular seam allowance. Now, because I'm using gray thread, I'm gonna press these seam allowances towards the gray and then top stitch on the gray piece. So that I don't have to worry too much about the outside of my bag having perfect top stitching on. So it won't be so noticeable if I go a bit wobbly then because it'll be the same color as my fabric. Just watch if you've got a bit of duct tape there that you don't catch that. Okay, so I'm just, all I'm gonna do is just top stitch these on the gray piece, on the gray side. Just keep those seam allowances together. left now is just to put this together and then the strap always the strap okay so I think it's easier I mean you could do this in any any order you like any preference you have but I think it's easier if you do the panel with the magnetic snaps on first rather than that big bulky panel with the um, flap attached as well so we've got our centers marked which is good. Actually, I'm gonna, this top one, I'm just gonna take that pin out and mark it with a pencil instead. Try and minimize how many times it gets spiked while I'm sewing this in. So right sides together, and it doesn't matter which direction you do this one on. It's um, my center marks. So do, start the center. Do these straight edges first and then the top edges and then we'll go back and do the curves like we did for the line and this one will be slightly trickier to fit because you've got the bulk of the inter uh, the stabilizer but it still should fit okay Okay, now this one, actually, I don't need to clip that at all. Well, I don't need to snip it at all, I should say. I'm still, because I'm using clips right now. <laughs> Check that's not puckered yet. So this one, let's see if this side I need to snip into the seam allowance. Nope don't need to at all on this so as I'm sewing as long as I'm able to keep these or well, no actually maybe I do on that just on that little corner there as long as you're able to keep these panels completely flat as you're sewing around them that's the main key to get not getting puckers or preventing puckers that's sitting a lot better actually so as I've snipped that now I can pull these down and I can see that where I'm going to be sewing on my seam allowance is completely flat. So I'll double check this side 
yeah maybe a couple of snips wouldn't go amiss just to be sure Great. Right, now I'm going to be using my regular stitch length for this and my regular seam allowance and I'm going to be taking it nice and steady. So as you've got this under the foot, just manipulate all of this bulk out of the way however you need to, to be able to sew on that completely flat with no puckers and no bulk. Okay. Back stitch at the start and the end. Before we clip that let's have a little look check there's no packers when you push it out so when you push these seam lines out check there's no packers there might be a few packers until you push it out and that would just be because of that added bulk in the seam allowance once you're happy with that then give those curves a little trim with your pink and shears or notch that seam allowance Do both of these corners. And then you should find that once you push that through, that's sitting much, much nicer. Okay. But you know what's coming next? I'm gonna sew, that's right, we're gonna sew this second main panel onto the gusset now. So if you haven't got your center marked do that now on this second main panel pencil tied i've tidied it up would you believe there we go okay so now we're going to match the center of the gusset the other side of the gusset into the center of this second main panel and we're going to clip along these straight edges first so we're doing exactly the same as we did on the first side but this side we've just got to try and ignore we've got this flap hanging out the way there or hanging out in the way I should say just do your straight edges and then your sides and we can worry about the clipping then or the snipping I should say okay so once you're happy that you've done your straight edges pop a few snips into these seam allowances to get that to ease around the corner be nice and tight okay. 
and we'll just ease this one around the corner as well don't be afraid of picking this up and just you know moving it how you need to to be able to get things to sit how you want them to okay okay and then we're just going to sew this same as we did you know the drill now regular stitch length regular seam allowance back stitching at the start and the end Right, okay. Just double check that there's no puckers along there. No, it, oh, hang on, there's a pin in there. I found that. No puckers, no missed bits before I trim it. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so we can give this a little trim with our pinking shears. Just take those seam allowances down. Just take that bulk out of the seam allowances. That's all you're doing. And that will help it sit nice and neat when you turn it out. Okay. Right, let's go ahead and turn our bags out. And we can have a little look then at what we've got so far. Make sure all of these edges are nicely turned out and that will give you a nice idea of if there's any issues or problems, you can spot those. No, can't see any, great. Now don't worry, if your snaps don't quite line up yet, you are gonna lose a little bit of height in the top there so your flap will come down lower once you've added your lining in before we do that though we need to add our strap and you should have two rectangle rings and a strap slider and that's what we're going to use for our strap right so all we are going to do on the back of these strap tabs both of them exactly the same. We're gonna draw a line lengthwise. So these are three inches long, so we're gonna draw a line at one and a half inches from the long edges. It should be in the center. I tidied my pencil up again. One and a half inches, that's it. And then we're gonna fold these long edges into the center and give it a little press so we'll do that very similar to how we did the device tab except we're not going to fold these ones in half and stitch around them we're going to fold them in half through the um, rectangle rings I'm going to do these both together at the same time because I think it's um, actually a little bit easier to do them both together so I'm just folding 
one edge and then the second edge into the center a little bit of steam steam on that one now we're going to top stitch along both long edges on these ones i'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge or three millimeters do those one after the other and then we'll thread these through the rectangle rings to the middle and I'm going to change my foot for my zip foot so that we can get really close in there to the edge of that rectangle ring so I'm just going to change my zip foot uh, change my foot to my zip foot and then we'll sew along there okay so we're just gonna pop these through so it's close as we can to the ring there Right, they look lovely and neat. I'll trim my extra threads. Like that. And then we can sew these into our, um, into the sides of our bag. So, now if you've got a free arm like me, you're gonna want to turn your bag inside out to do this. If you've, uh, sorry, if you've got a flat bed like me, then you're going to want to turn your machine in, uh, turn your bag inside out. It'd be amazing if you could turn your machine inside out. If you've got a free arm, then you can do it. Um, just take the free arm off, or we'll take the extension off, and sew it on the free arm. So all we're going to do is centre these right sides together. Well, double sided, aren't they? But centre these over the side gussets here and base those into place. So if you've got a free arm, just pop it on your machine and whiz it through. If you've got a flat bed like me, you're gonna to want to turn your bag inside out. And then you can sew with your presser foot inside your bag. I'm just gonna swap over to my walking foot again, my regular foot. And then we'll sew the, um, sew the strap tabs in. Right, so all we're gonna do is pop the bag on the machine like this, pull it however you need to to get it under. And then just sew with the foot inside the bag. That's all we're gonna do. The same on this side. OK, 
Okay, so we've sewn inside the bag to attach those. But needs must, we can turn this right sides out now. Okay, we can see how our bag's gonna look now. It's a good, good impression of what we're aiming at, isn't it? Now, next we're gonna sew our strap. And um, because the fabrics I'm using are um, upcycled shirts, I've had to piece my strap. And this is from one of our skill builder sessions on our Patreon channel patreon.com forward slash bag and air on how to piece a um, or how to do a two-tone strap and I've pieced that together so all we're doing with this strap is fold it in half let me open it so that you can see done my pressing ahead of time to save you having to watch that so all I did was fold in half and give it a press open up and then fold into the center, give it a press, and then fold it again into center. So you've got a four fold strap. Now the main difference is that we are gonna then unfold this and fold it back on itself so that your two long folded edges meet. Okay, so I'll recap on that. So, you've got your six inch wide strap piece, fold it in half, and press open up fold the long edges into the center and press and then fold it back on itself okay we're going to sew along this end here using a uh, let me double check what um, quarter inch seam allowance that's six mil thought that might be the case but I thought I'd better double check Okay, I will do the other side while I'm here as well. I'll swap you over to the other view as well so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just making sure all of those edges line up nice and neat. And so in a quarter of an inch. Okay, now we're gonna trim the corners off of these ends okay and do the other one this one's a little bit messy this end pretend it's nice and neat I suspect it's the fabric I've chosen okay and then we're just gonna fold that right sides out and give that a little finger roll and you can um, pop something into the corner there just to help that sit nice and neat out. And if you haven't already, go back then and fold your strap and give it a nice press all the way along so that you've got this nice long strap. Mine is slightly longer because um, I didn't really measure it, I just pieced it together. <laughs> and um, your ends are nicely folded in, okay? And then we're gonna just stitch along both long edges and the short two edges as well so we're going to go around all four sides of the strap i'm going to start here-ish so all the way down across the short end of the strap and all the way back up the folded edge as well just to make that fully enclosed strap no raw edges and i'm sewing it one eighth of an inch that's three mil away from the edge and i'm using my top stitch length stitch length
Okay. Right, now, let me just follow the pictures, make sure I'm telling you the right thing to do. Now we need our strap slider. There we go. Okay, so if you've got a right side on your strap slider, let me see which way I want this to be. I think it looks fairly similar, both sides, actually. If you've got a right side, then make sure that your slider is right side up in the next picture. So we're just going to slip the... Um, Slip the end of the strap through from the wrong side and back through and out. Okay, so you've got the wrong side here and then flip that end over and turn your slider over. So you've got the right side is um, the same side as this fold over here. Just clip these threads here before I lose those and then we're going to stitch this into place. You can add a rivet or two if you prefer. Okay, so that's our slider secure on the strap. And we're going to thread it through the rings next. Swap you back so you can see the whole view. Okay, oh dear, I've skipped a step. I've just realized, looked in the pattern. I've already attached my strap tabs to, um, to the bag. We'll pretend that I didn't do that. Okay, now I need to think, which side do I want to carry this on? So I'm gonna thread it through as though I'm making it this way and double check that that's the side I want the um the strap on okay so i've got my slider right sides up with that fold over and i've threaded it through the strap tab or the um rectangle ring on the strap tab through and out the other side now the way i am going to determine if this is the way i want it is i'm going to pretend that i am carrying it and i like to carry bags like this now, that means that the double length is on my front. I prefer to have it on my back, so I'm gonna swap it around. I know that that needs to swap around, so do exactly the same. Got my strap slider right sides up with a fold over there. Make sure my strap is not twisted, and I'm gonna thread it through that strap, that um, rectangle ring through the slider and out the other side. Okay, now before I secure this into the second ring, I'm just going to hold it up against me and double check that is how I want my strap. Yes, that is how I like it. Okay. So all we need to do now, this loose end just need to thread through this strap tab. The bag keeps falling over. I wonder if it's because I've got the flap closed. Let's try that. There we go. Okay. So this strap tab is right side down. The strap slider is right side down. So now I need to feed it down under the bag and pass this through from underneath and fold it over. Now before I sew that, just gonna double check that that is right. Give myself a little bit of a sense check by holding it up like this to check that. This fold over is on the inside of the strap. My strap slider is on the outside there and that lines up nice and neat and then I can just secure that into place with a little bit of stitching or a rivet if you prefer. Doesn't matter which one. Just going for a budget bag this time without any rivets. Okay. Now if you're following the pattern 
at this point you would attach the strap to the bag but we've kind of skipped ahead a bit so that's okay and we are so nearly done very nearly finished so go and find your lining and when we come back we're just going to finish it off we're just going to add our lining into our exterior right so we've finished our exterior we've finished our lining it's time to put the two together you should still have your piece of plastic bag base as well don't forget right now first things first what i'm going to do is i'm going to roll my flap and pop it inside this back pocket okay and that's just going to keep it out of the way and yet it's a bit bulky but the bulkiness is down inside the pocket and this top area where we're going to attach a line into is going to be fine i'm also going to add a pin into each strap tab a little bit further down so just about there and that's going to keep these in place and keep them down completely straight um, when we're adding the lining okay now next thing we need to do is open your top zip your zip bridge and also the zip pocket zip now we haven't opened this yet so let's open that if you've already opened that you can um i don't know just twiddle your thumbs for a minute i'm just going to open this turning gap in the bottom of the bag or in the bottom of the pocket sorry and that should hopefully leave a nice turning gap behind for us to turn our bag through at the end so at this point your exterior should be right sides out and your lining will be wrong sides out now this is going to be a tight squeeze and the reason we do it this way is um so that we've only got to turn the bag through once if you find it's really really too tight and you just can't bear it then please do consider doing it the other way around okay now i need to remember so i decided that my device pocket was going to be on the front so the front is the one with the magnetic snaps on i'm going to put the front of my bag into my lining with the front of my bag matching to my device pocket if you've decided on the other way around then pop it in the other way around so strap goes in first i'm literally just shoving it in there okay hence why i've added those pins in okay so my exterior is in tuck that zip end down inside your bag keep that out of the way now starting in one corner just match these side seams together so that your side seams for your exterior and your lining gusset are matching just in one little place okay that's all you need to do turn it round and then match the other side seams so lining and gus uh, lining and exterior gusset seams matching on both ends that's all you need to do for now okay don't panic next we are going to find our center point on each of our exterior and lining and match those and add a clip and have I got a center point in here I must have had center points I remember marking them where they've gone though who knows in fact I don't have one on either side of that one if you haven't got them you can just pull these fabrics so they're nice and straight and taut and just clip them together and if you end up with a bit extra at the end then we've got issues but um, hopefully you won't but the whole point of marking the centers is so that you know that everything is being perfectly matched up together that matches Phew. now on this side it should be a little bit better because i've matched my center so now i can just clip these bits together along the top i've got a little bit of fraying here so i'm just going to pull these threads out so that, that doesn't get caught in my seam <clears throat> okay that matches as well now 
Now I've left a section of this unclipped and that is where I'm gonna start sewing. Now because I haven't got a free arm, I've got a flat bed, I'm gonna sew inside the bag. So I'm gonna put my, I'll swap you around so you can see how I'm putting this on the machine. I'm just putting it on under my foot like that and put my foot down to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm inside the bag there with my presser foot. I'm gonna sew this with my regular stitch length, my regular seam allowance of one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna go all the way around the top of the bag, back stitching at the start and the end. Right, so we've sewn it around the entire top now. I'm very conscious of the fact that I've got a couple of pins in this. So I'm gonna see if I can reach through and just get those pins out before I go any further. I'm just gonna try and reach those. I'm there, there we go, there's one. Just before I catch myself on those pins. I speak from experience there. <laughs> okay, right now I need to turn this bag through. So reach in as far as you can and grab this bottom corner and give it a little tug. Now, we need to make sure that these bottom corner curves are lovely and turned out before we go any further. Double check that you're happy with all your top stitch, all your, sorry, all your stitching along the top there. Around the curves, yeah, great. Now, don't forget your bag base. I've put this bit of tape on mine to remind me which way it goes in. So I know that that bit goes in that way. Grab your feet. 
and then we're one hand inside the bag through the turning gap and one hand on the outside I'm gonna pop a foot through and then I think as long as you get the first couple accurate the other two should fall into place nice and easily I'm wondering if my hole is a slight too small I can see them not quite yeah I think my holes are too small for my feet to fit through so I'm just going to punch some slightly bigger holes it was in the right place at least just big enough to get these prongs through that's all we need yeah in fact that hole's tiny and then we'll add a bit of tape just to secure these in place as well uh, there's my tape right let's try again then so where's my tape my tape is that side so I'm going to add it in to that side and a foot oh I've lost a foot now what do I do with my foot it's still in the bag my goodness <laughs> that's good great that is, isn't it brilliant <laughs> Right, so push it through the hole in the bag base and then open your prongs out and then pop the second foot in. Feel around for the hole, there's the hole. Okay, my prongs are through and I can open those out. And then the next two as well. So pop those through the hole in the base of the bag seek out the hole in the bottom of the plastic there we go and open that out and then the last one that went into place easy peasy that one did so check that you're happy with the placement of those and then we'll add just a little bit of tape to the back of the prongs just to keep them in place stop them from sliding around anywhere or going, going walkies. These feet are not made for walking. So I've just put um, four scraps of tape, cut those ready. And pop them on the back of these prongs, just to keep those in place on that on that bag base and plastic base in there give them a bit of extra security you can do this by touch but I much prefer to have a little peer through pocket okay and then we can close this turning up. well you've got a choice actually you can close the turning gap now or you can push this into place the lining back into place Give it a good old press and a top stitch and then close the turning gap. It's your choice really, which you prefer. Now you see that the um, zip bridge wants to stick out here, but we are gonna want it to sit in nice and neat so that when the bag is open, it's going down inside the bag. So you can fold this over finger press it into place and clip it and you can leave this overnight maybe if your fabric is particularly thick just to settle into place before you do your final top stitch I think I'm going to do my top stitching and then close my turning gap just in case I need to use this turning gap to pull any of the lining down into place So I'm starting at the center and working out again. All the way along and I'm just doing it along the zip bridge for the minute. And then I'll go and do the bits, the other bits. Okay. So then this gusset, we need to make sure that that's pulled down nicely inside. And for this one, I'm gonna use a pin. 
and I'm just going to pin those two layers together, the exterior and the lining, to make sure that that's um, really down inside there where we need it to be. Where are all these extra threads coming from? I'm sure they went there earlier. Okay, so mind your end of your zip out of the way. Pull these layers down. Give that a nice clip or a pin. Okay, so that is all where it should be. Just double check that your pockets are fitting in nice and neat where they should. Yeah, lovely, okay. Um, now we're gonna top stitch around the entire top of the bag. Um, you can do this from the inside or the outside of your bag. So if you've got a free arm, I would suggest using that and popping your bag on like this, okay? If you haven't got a free arm, then I would suggest you turn your bag inside out same as me and then you're going to be sewing inside the bag but on the exterior fabric so when you turn it right sides out your top stitch will still be on the outside and I'm going to start in this back corner here I think let me swap you over I'm going to take these clips off so that I can make sure that I get it under under my foot. Okay, so make sure that your strap is sitting out nice and proud and everything else is tucked in under where it needs to be. Take this nice and slow and steady now use your top stitch in length and we're going to go all the way around the top just pull the rest of this bag out of the way however you need to to be able to sew So just have a little check that you are happy with all of that before you turn it and close your turning gap. I'm going to take these pins out. Loose threads everywhere. Where do they come from? Probably because I'm not putting them in the bin properly. Maybe. Um, oh, another one there. Oh, no, that's the one we just made. 
that's okay. Right, so now I'm gonna turn this out, right sides out. And if you close your turning gap already, then you are done, you just need to give it a little press. And if you didn't, then you just need to close your turning gap and give it a little press and defluff all your threads. <laughs> okay, so check you're happy with that. That looks great. And then I'm gonna pull the bottom of my pocket out. And just turn under that, or fold under that turning gap. And you should have a line of holes where we had our basting stitches and we we took them out and fold along there. And then we'll just stitch this closed. Now, if you want it to be really neat, then a hand ladder stitch would be best, or even a thread that matches the color of your fabric. But I'm using my contrast thread still, so I'm just gonna pop it in using this. back in where it should go and we'll give it a little press and then we are done okay clear some space now if you've got a ironing mitt then I, that's what I like to use better not better put it there just in case I like to use an ironing mitt, which keeps me safe when doing this, or an oven glove or something. But if you feel any kind of heat at all, then stop immediately, pull your hands out straight away. Okay. Just give your bag a nice, a nice steam, nice spa moment pick these bits off, these bits of loose thread. Nice little steam press all the way around. That's gonna give us a really nice finish to our bag, ready to show it off. Nothing worse than showing off a bag that's finished but hasn't been pressed, because I think it doesn't actually show off your skills as a bag maker. It doesn't show your bag to the best of its best of its beauty so if you've got time to give it a little press then I would recommend that okay right so the body of my bag is pressed I've just given my flap a little press as well make sure it's nice and neat and I'm gonna close my zip pockets make sure that's all nice in there Yep, that fits really well now, now that I've pressed it. So if your lining's not fitting quite so well, give it a little press, see if that helps. So I've closed my sit bridge there and I can close my flap, snap that together. Just make sure that that flap is nice and neat as well. A little bit of steam there. There we go. Right, and I think that is our bag done with a super long strap on my one. I suspect that I might need to shorten that at some point. But I'm quite pleased with that. I hope you're pleased with your bag as well. And if you do make a Morgan Messenger bag, let us see it. Um, give us a shout, send us an email, mrsh at mrs-h.com or tag us on Instagram at Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H or Facebook at Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H or Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H support group. Come and join us there in the Facebook group. Thank you for sewing with me today. I've really enjoyed myself and I hope you have too. Bye.